Got another question for the paper three playlist. So this one, as always, contains loads of different topics. So it's got structure and bonding, oxidation number, mass spec, proton NMR, shapes and molecules, and transition elements. Hope you like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. So there's my answer to part A. I'll just quickly run through it. So we've got to talk about the different types of structures these things have got. So ammonia is a simple molecule. It's got hydrogen bonds between those and its three molecules. Whereas ammonium nitrate is an ionic compound. So you've got ionic bonds between the ions. And then all you've got to do is get across the relative strength of the two bonds. So ionic bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds. And therefore they're going to need more energy to break. Moving on to the next part, which students write about the oxidation numbers. So I've broken the ammonium nitrate up into its ions and I've put the oxidation numbers in for the known um, atoms. So we've got four hydrogens in the ammonium ion. Each of those has an oxidation number of plus one. So the nitrogen to give this positive charge has to be minus three. Moving on to the nitrate ion, three oxygens, minus two each. So to get the one minus charge, nitrogen needs to be plus five. So there's that written up there. Student that disagrees is correct. Oxidation number of nitrogen is negative three in the ammonium ion, but it's plus five in the nitrate ion. Moving on to part B, so these orangey red peaks are for the copper, 63 and 65. So the others in blue are for the zinc. There's your percentages there. 66% for the copper, 34% for the zinc. And for the relative atomic mass for zinc calculation, so we're only interested in the 64, 66, 67 and 68 peaks. So it's a percentage abundance times the M over Z values. Just add all them together. But be careful, don't divide by 100 because it's not 100% zinc, it's 34%. Um, so you get an answer of 65.42. Part C now, so the NMR section. So proton environment one, what have we got adjacent next door? We've got a CH2 group, so these are going to come out as a triplet. Environment two next to a CH3 group so they're going to come out as a quartet environment three so they're adjacent to this single hydrogen at environment four so that's going to be a doublet and environment four adjacent to that CH2 at position three and so that's going to be another triplet and obviously I've just used the n plus one rule there Moving on to the next part, just got to explain why these hydrogens, both in H to C to C double bond O environments, um, have different shift values. So if we look at three, environment three, so we've got C double bond O's on either side of the um, CH2 group here. However, for environment two, we've just got a C double bond O on one side, and that's obviously going to make the shift values different. Moving on to part D, you can see I've drawn up the relevant part of each structure. So if we think about the glycine molecule, so what have we got around the nitrogen? Well, we've got four electron regions around there, but you've got three bonding regions and a lone pair. Whereas in the salt around the nitrogen, you've got um, four bonding regions because effectively the lone pair on the nitrogen is now forming a coordinate bond to the H plus ion. So we've still got four electron regions, but they're now all bonding. And remember, lone pairs repel more than bonding regions. That's going to reduce the bond angle from 109.5 that you get for four regions to 107. Whereas in the salt, you're going to get the standard angle for four electron regions, 109.5 degrees from the equal repulsion. Moving on to the equation, so the only tricky thing really was to get the formula for copper 2 ethanoate out. So just remember the carboxylate ion is just one minus, so we're going to need two of those for your copper 2 plus ion. 
and for the very last part the structures so we're told that these are square planar so I've drawn up two empty square planar structures ready to go there's the displayed formula for this ligand here and you'll notice I've highlighted the nitrogen and the O minus that's because that's how this ligand is going to attach going to form coordinate bonds two coordinate bonds via these two lone pairs so they can either add this way around so we'll just focus on the NH2 part you can see that they're just 90 degrees away from each other so this is like a cis isomer or they could add this way around so you can see that the NH2 groups are now 180 degrees apart from each other so this bottom ligand's just flipped around from that position and that's like a trans isomer